Hey guys, it's Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. So today's video is going to be all about Lauren Brooke Cosmetics, which is a brand that I have been really curious about for a long time. Um, I've been raving about their blush on my channel for a couple of years now. You may recognize this because I talk about it all the time. It's in one of my project pans right now, but their pressed cheek color in Sweet 16 is the blush that I got in a subscription box a long time ago. That's what introduced me to this brand. And since then, I've been meaning to try more products from the brand. So I did recently, a couple of months ago, place an order uh, to try out a few more products from the brand. So I wanted to do kind of a brand focus. Um, I, I don't want to call it a brand review because I haven't tried everything from the brand, so I can't possibly give you like a full brand review. But um, I did kind of select an array of products to give, uh, to give all of us kind of an idea of how products in each category kind of work from this brand. So... This is a brand that I would probably describe as an indie brand. They're really not sold um, anywhere other than on their website as far as I can tell. The brand is kind of all about being natural, pure, and organic. That's kind of their little motto underneath their logo. Um, they are Leaping Bunny certified. They're also Logical Harmony certified as cruelty free. It looks like they're really all about being kind of a natural, organic, clean beauty brand. So it says no parabens, no toxic chemicals, or unnecessary fillers. Um, a lot of like mineral type ingredients and things like that. Um, just looking at their about page, the founder of the company is named Lauren Brooke, which makes sense. Uh, the company was created in 2005. I'm going to talk a little bit about the products that I've been trying out and then I will also be doing kind of like a try on. So the products that I've been trying from this brand actually have quite a selection here. Um, the first one is the cream foundation. I just have a little sample of that. And then I also have their pressed foundation, which is a powder foundation. I have their blending sponge as well. And then, of course, the blush in Sweet 16, a single eyeshadow in the shade Sweet Pea. This was actually just kind of like a free gift with purchase because I didn't actually purchase this myself. They just included it in my order, which was really nice of them. And then the liquid liner, I have it in the shade Royal Purple. And then lastly, the uh, lip moisturizer, which is really a lip balm. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into the try-on demo, whatever you wanna call it, and then you can kind of see how all these products work. And then at the end, we'll kind of do a recap. I'll share like my final thoughts on each product. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into the demo. Um, so I did get a little sample of their cream foundation just because I was curious to try it. Um, the sample is $1.50 and it says that you get three grams of product in here. It's just this little plastic case. I chose the shade neutral number 00. Um, it might be a bit light for me, but that's okay. But that is nice that they have the sample option so you can try a few shades before you decide on one. So this foundation comes in 17 shades. The shade, the shade range, it's hard to tell looking at the website. It looks like an okay shade range, but I can't quite tell how dark it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. It's a little bit of a thick kind of whipped texture. So it's been kind of a while since I've used this to be honest with you. Um, but I do know that it has pretty light coverage and quite a dewy finish. Um, another product from them that I got was their sponge. This is called their Pure Complexion Blending Sponge. Uh, I got the pink. It also comes in black. I don't know if there's any difference between the two, but um, this is damp. I'm going to do one side with the sponge and the other side with the brush just to kind of test out both ways. Yeah, I think the shade is, <laughs> it's a little too light for me, but that's, that's okay. We're just testing it out. Um, I will be honest, okay, the sponge is $13, which is not that much more expensive than a lot of um, drugstore sponges. Ooh, yeah, that is really light. The shape of it, it's kind of like, kind of like an hourglass shape and it does come to a point. Um, I gotta say, I'm really, I haven't been enjoying the sponge too much. I thought I'd try it because I was in need of a new sponge anyway, and so I thought maybe this one is worth a try. Um, it's honestly pretty hard, and so if you don't like a really stiff, dense feeling sponge, probably wouldn't like this one. But I mean, it does an okay job blending it out. It's usable. I'll continue to use it, and I wouldn't, I don't think I'd recommend it. I think I like the Real Techniques one better. I like the Flower Beauty one. And those are cheaper options anyway. Um, I'll do the other side with my Wet n Wild flat top brush so you can see if there's a difference in the level of coverage. Yeah, now that I'm putting this on, this shade is really quite light for me, but uh, that's all right. Um, my skin was already moisturized ahead of time, um, and I did not use a primer today just because I want to 
be able to show exactly what the products are doing without any help, I guess. Yeah, I'm looking white as a ghost right now. <laughs> Hopefully when I get it blended out, it'll be okay. I used to think that I was like the palest shade out there that I like needed, that I always needed the lightest shade, but apparently I'm not that pale. This foundation does feel kind of greasy on my skin. So if you have really dry skin, I think you'd probably like this more than if you have oily skin. But on the plus side, it does feel pretty moisturizing, so. But based on my experience with this foundation, I don't think it's one that I would personally go and buy the full size of. Okay, I guess I'm using the brush all over my face now. Yeah, I'd say it has light coverage. You can still see some of those blemishes. I don't have a concealer from the brand, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my normal concealer um, with the Pixie Correction Concentrate under my eyes and then I'll do the Wet n Wild Photo Focus concealer on top of that. We'll try to blend these out with the sponge, but I probably will end up going in with a brush. I feel like I'm not really the best person to review a sponge because I don't really prefer sponges for my application. I like bl I like tend to like brushes better because I feel like they just give me more coverage. Um, but let's see what the sponge can do. It's decent. It just feels very hard. Like, I don't know. But maybe you prefer a harder sponge. I don't know. Most people seem to like soft ones. I'll do the brush on the other side just so we can kind of compare and contrast. This is um, just the e.l.f. What is this? Flawless concealer brush. Um, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Wet n Wild concealer just for some more coverage. I feel like I need more help. <laughs> but you can really see how dewy that foundation looks right now before I've set it. Um, which, you know, I kind of like a dewy foundation, but this one really does feel very... I don't know if greasy is the right word. Very dewy. Like, my skin feels dewy. Even like, I'm not touching it, but I can just kind of feel it, you know? I'm not gonna conceal the rest of my face because I am going to use the Lauren Brooke Cosmetics, actually their pressed foundation um, all over the face as well. And we'll kind of see how much coverage that adds. This is in the shade Neutral number 00 as well. So the same shade as the foundation. Again, a little bit too light for me, but that's okay. I am gonna set my under eyes first with a different powder because I really prefer the e.l.f. Um, under eye setting powder for under the eyes. Now I am going to go ahead and apply the pressed foundation all over my face. Um, a few details on this product. This comes in 16 shades. They have cool, warm, and neutral. So does the, the cream foundation. The shade range on this one does not look very good to me now that I'm looking at it. But again, it's really hard to tell because they don't have it like swatched on an actual person. They just have the little picture. I can't, I can't really tell how good the shade range is, but it definitely looks like it could use some improvement. Um, the price of this is $29.50, so pretty expensive, um, and you get 9 grams of product. So it comes in a compact. Um, when I got it, it came with a little powder, um, you know, powder puff kind of thing that you could use to apply it, but I threw that away because I never used those. So I'm just going to apply it with a powder brush. It does have a nice mirror in there. One thing about this powder and all of the powder products that I've tried from this brand is it feels very dry to the touch. Like, can you hear that? Very dry. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing, um, but something to keep in mind. It's not a powder that I would describe as like creamy and soft and buttery, um, but it doesn't apply to the face looking extra dry or anything. And this is described as a powder foundation. So we will see how much coverage it has. I mean, I already know because I've been, <laughs> been testing it out, but you'll get to see. You know, it adds a little bit of coverage to those areas, but you can definitely still see those blemishes pretty well. Um, so I wouldn't say that this adds much more coverage than a lot of powders would, but it is nice for light makeup days when I don't want to wear a liquid foundation. I don't want to wear a lot of like cream products on my face. Um, it's been especially nice during the summer. 
I mentioned in a recent video that I have really been enjoying powder foundation lately and just using a face powder um, as my as my foundation. So this has been really nice for that. I feel like I kind of have to dig my brush in there because like I said it really it's really tightly packed. So it's kind of it's not it's not one of those things that kicks up a lot of powder when you dip your brush in. You kind of have to scrape your brush in there. But I've been using this a lot and I haven't there's really not much of a dip going on in there yet. So that's interesting. I don't know um, I feel like this might be a product that lasts me a really long time. So there's the pressed foundation. You can see my skin now is looking pretty matte. Um, compared to before, it was quite dewy. So typically I use this on its own. I've also used it to set other foundations as well. It's a nice powder. But like I said, I don't know about the shade range. I feel like they could probably do a little bit better. <laughs> I don't have a bronzer from this company, but I am going to just go ahead and bronze my face like normal with my Lily Lolo Sculpt and Glow Contour Duo. So the blush that I have from this brand, this is the product that really sparked my interest in this brand. This is one that I've had for a really long time, and this is their Pressed Cheek Color in Sweet 16. This is actually a sample size. It has 1.8 grams of product. I'm looking on the website now, and it doesn't appear that they have the sample size actually available for purchase now. This came in a subscription box actually a few years ago now so I kind of wish they had the sample size available because this honestly lasts forever like I've been trying to use this up and I still haven't even hit pan on it I've been using it every single day for the last like three months but the full size comes with 2.5 grams so a little bit more than what's in here this is 1.8 grams um, and it retails for $16.50 it comes in three shades the one I have is sweet 16 which is like a normal kind of bubblegum pink kind of shade it's not it's not I guess it's kind of a neutral pink, it's not really warm or cool. Um, the other shades that it comes in are Primrose, which looks like a little bit more of a mauve shade, and then Caramel Latte, which is a little bit more of a bronzy blush. This product, you guys probably already know if you've been watching me for a while, is one of my favorite blushes ever, so that's kind of why I wanted to try more from this brand, because I really do like this blush. It's um, The shade is, you know, kind of a standard blush shade, but it blends really nicely. It lasts all day, even though it's kind of more of like a natural brand. Um, I feel like it, I, I was surprised with the staying power of it. And I don't know, I just like it for some reason. It's been one of my favorite blushes for a long time. So that's kind of why I wanted to try more products from Lauren Brooke Cosmetics. I feel like it's a brand that gets hardly any attention on YouTube and on social media. So I kind of wanted to give them a spotlight. There's the blush. I put kind of a lot on, but, and it looks like even more because my foundation is so light that everything just stands out. I don't have a highlight from this brand, so I'm just going to go back into the Lily Lolo duo. They actually included this single eyeshadow in my order. I didn't order it myself, but I guess it was just kind of like a free gift with purchase. This is the pressed eyeshadow single in the shade Sweet Pea, which is a shade that really is right up my alley. It's a pretty kind of purpley mauve. It is matte. This is the full size, and it also comes with 1.8 grams. It's actually the same exact packaging as that blush, um, but keep in mind this is not the full size blush. But it's the same packaging, same size. They do have a lot of other shades. They have quite a few mattes, a few demi mattes, and then some shimmers. Um, and this single shadow retails for $15.50, which is a little bit pricey. Probably not something that I would have purchased on my own. So I will use this in a little while. I'm going to go ahead and do my brows off camera. Um, and then we'll do some eye makeup. But this is the only eyeshadow I have from them. But I will incorporate this into my eyeshadow. Today I'll probably just use it as a crease color. And you can see how it goes on. Alright, so brows are done. I have my eyelids primed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this shadow in the crease. That's how I normally use a matte mid-tone shade like this. And I'm just going to use a crease brush from Eco Tools. So this eyeshadow, I was a little disappointed. Kind of like all the powder products from this brand that I've experienced, it's very dry. Like very dry and chalky. When I swatch it, okay, let me, tr let me swatch it on camera so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm rubbing my finger back and forth. Do you see that swatch? 
it's like hardly anything. You try to put a little bit more on. Okay, see there's some color, but it's very chunky and chalky, and I'm like trying to smooth it out and it's just like blending away. But you know, on the eyes, you know, it does show up. You kind of have to build it up and it is just gonna be like a light wash of color, but it's pretty, you know, it's pretty. I already have a lot of shades like this in my collection in other palettes. It's probably not something that I'm going to keep because um, I didn't pay for it and I have so many other things like it. I'm not really much into single shadows unless they're like the single pants that go into a Z palette. Um, so to be honest with you, I'm probably going to end up decluttering this very soon, but I, I'm glad to be able to have it to review it. But you can see, I mean, it's, it's, it's building up. It's, you know, it's pretty. Let me zoom in a little bit. So, yeah. This, it's a pretty type of color. This is one of my favorite types of shades to use in the crease. But I do have other shadows in my collection that are similar shades that I just like better. So I almost forgot about the eyeliner. I did pick up their liquid liner in the shade Royal Purple. Um, I chose a color because I am just kind of trying to build up my collection of colorful eyeliners as it is. So I thought it'd be a fun way to try something colorful. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my eyeshadow off camera because I don't have any other eyeshadows from the brand, um, but then I'll come back and we'll do some liner. All right, so the eyeshadow's done. Now I'm going to put on the eyeliner. So like I said, this is their liquid liner in the shade Royal Purple. It has kind of a traditional packaging, but it does have a felt tip as opposed to a brush tip. This is probably my least favorite product that I've tried from the brand so far, and you'll see why in just a second. just like for some reason I don't know how much of this has to do with the felt tip and how much of it is the formula of the liner itself but I have a really hard time getting an even line oh, but I, I am gonna it just goes on really streaky I'm gonna try to do a wing but I don't know how it's gonna look so the wing didn't look terrible honestly it doesn't look as bad this time as it has before, but it's really not very opaque. And I got it all in my lashes too, which I guess is just kind of what happens when you... I don't know, I guess it looks better than it has. I guess, to be honest, my experience with this liner was better this time than it has been any other time. And I don't know if it's because I kind of let it sit for a few weeks without using it. The swatches are very streaky. Like, it's hard to get... The, the tip comes out with a lot of product on it, but then when I swatch it, it's like... It's almost like I'm painting with watercolor or something. <laughs> like, you know? You see what I mean? Like, that's not... It's not ideal. I'm gonna go ahead and do mascara and lips and then I'll come back and kind of recap everything. Um, before I get into like the recap, let me go ahead and review the lip moisturizer as well. So this is, they have two full sizes. There's one full size that's in this packaging, the silver packaging, and then they also have an oval packaging, which is a little bit more of like a standard plastic um, oval shaped like chapstick type of container. I went for the smaller size just because I already have other lip balms and I didn't really want to commit to like the big size, but it still does have a pretty nice amount of product. The silver tube has four point, or no, the silver tube has two grams and then the oval tube has 4.8 grams. The price of the silver tube is $8.50 and then the oval, which is bigger, um, has more than double the, the amount of product is 11. So you would get a better value with the oval tube, but I just wanted to try it. So that's why I got the smaller one. So the packaging is okay. The, it, I've just kind of been tossing it around in my purse. So that's probably not the best for it, but the cap has gotten a little bit cracked. It still goes on and it stays on. But then also the, the product itself, that's all I have left. So I've really used it a lot, but it kind of just broke off. So I have to kind of make sure it stays down in there. I don't know if that's my fault or the product, but it doesn't matter. I'm still able to use it, so it's fine. 
Um, also, the writing has already worn off of the label, so, um, but the, those are just small details. The lip balm itself is nice. It definitely does moisturize my lips, but I don't feel like it's that much better than cheaper ones, like the Crazy Rumors ones are really nice, the Burt's Bees lip balms. Um, there are just a lot of cheaper ones, so I don't think this is something that I would go back and repurchase. I don't think it's revolutionary, but it's a nice, I mean, it does its job, so I don't really have anything bad to say about it, but I just feel like um, there are cheaper ones that I would probably rather go for. So that's the lip balm. Now let's go ahead and kind of recap everything. So out of all the products that I've tried, the ones that I would definitely recommend would be the blush and the powder foundation. Those are two products that I definitely have really enjoyed. The lip balm is nice, but I just, I don't think you need to spend the money on it. The cream foundation I think is nice. I would recommend getting a few samples of it to kind of find the right shade for you and that way you can see if you like the formula. I think if you have dry skin and you like a lighter coverage foundation, then you're probably most likely to enjoy this. If you have really oily skin or you like more full coverage, I don't think you go for that, but it's definitely worth a try. And I like that they offer samples. I would definitely skip the liner. I just don't think it's any good. <laughs> I'm, I don't know how they even sell these. I don't know if I just got a bad one, but I'm not interested in trying any more shades of that. I just think it's really streaky. The tip is kind of hard to work with. I usually get a really bumpy line. Um, it's just, I have a really hard time with it. And I like the Wet n Wild liquid liners that are in the same type of packaging a lot better. And if you're wanting to try some colorful liners, they have some really nice colors. I have the one of theirs in blue and it's gorgeous. It's so much easier to work with than this. It actually gives you like an opaque line, whereas this one is just so streaky. Um, and it kind of, I don't know, I just don't think that's any good. And it's $16 save your money. The sponge I'd also skip unless you know that you like a more hard, dense sponge. Um, I also forgot to mention, I did wash this last night and I noticed that a lot of the pink dye was like bleeding out of it. So I don't know what that means, but it, I feel like the color got a little bit lighter, but I don't, I wouldn't recommend that. I would say go for a a drugstore one. So that's my review of all the products I've tried from Lauren Brooke Cosmetics. Let me know if you've tried this brand. Um, I know it's not really talked about much on YouTube, so I kind of just wanted to give it a spotlight in this video and just kind of share some thoughts on the products in case you've been curious about the brand. Now you might know some products that you might want to try, might want to skip, um, but I hope this was helpful and if you like these kinds of like under the radar brand spotlight videos, let me know because um, I'd love to do more of them um, if you have any particular brands you'd like me to do. Let me know in the comments if you have tried any other products from this brand. They also have a lot of skincare products available that I haven't tried. Um, kind of, I'm a little more hesitant to try new skincare products because I kind of have, I know what I like, so I don't, I'm not as likely to branch out on those things. But anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you guys next time.